Hi everyone, I'm Jules, and today I'm going to show you how to easily create a work breakdown structure. The work breakdown structure, or WBS, is essentially when you have to break down your project scope to manageable work-driven items you need to complete in order to satisfy your stakeholders. Now, before we get into what the work breakdown structure really is, let's first go over what it is not. Firstly, it is not a product breakdown structure where you break down all the components of a product you are making. It is also not a cost breakdown structure where you break down the items and costs to fund your projects. It isn't an organizational breakdown structure where you break down the departments and roles. And last of all, it is not a to-do list or a checklist where you list all the things you need to complete for a project. Now that we understand what WBS is not, let's get into exactly what it is. First and foremost, WBS consists of five levels. And in order to understand them, let's go through each and include examples that detail projects dealing with a product, a service, or a software. In level one, what you'll be asking yourself is, what is your project's end game? And it is here where you will place the highest level of emphasis on what it is you are trying to accomplish. In many cases, it can be the outcome of the project and all that you need to have are your project scope and stakeholders requirements. For this particular example, let's assume the product is a doghouse. The service is online training and the software is SAP. This now brings us to level two, where you're going to ask yourself, what are the main sections your project needs to go through? Now, at this point, what you need to do is respond with the group you feel comfortable breaking down your project into. There can be many forms that this can take, and some examples of what you may see include the different phases of the project, the different departments that need to be involved, the areas in which it will take place, the factory cells, and so on. Now back to our previous example, at this point, your breakdown should look something like this. Pay specific attention to how you present what it is you are trying to accomplish and break it down into the different stages. Now that that's done, let's go on to level three. At this point, you want to ask yourself, what are the deliverables you need to accomplish to complete the section? You need to respond with the main things you need to do within each of the sections, ideally in a chronological order. And all you want to do is take each of your main sections above and list what the main things you need to do within each section is. It should look something like the screen in front of you. Once you reach level four, your next question to answer is, what are the tasks you need to do in order to complete the deliverable? At this point, you need to respond with steps you need to take to complete the deliverable. In many cases, it should be the action that needs to be done. As per our example, you can see here that we lay out each step in a chronological order. So now that we've reached the fifth and final level, what you'll be asking yourself is what is the work package required to complete the task? If you don't already know, a work package is a series of activities you do using the 880 rule, which states that the work should be done within an eight hour to 80 hour time frame. This level is the lowest level of your WBS and where each of the subtasks is in action. This is also the level that you apply time and cost. And now we'll see what it looks like when applied to our examples. To further elaborate, let's get into a little more detail using the doghouse example. Once you reach the lowest level of your WBS, 
you can then apply the WBS in your scheduling tool. When scheduling, you would place the duration of each activity at the lowest level along with the resource used, whether it be a person or an equipment, and the cost for doing the type of work. The duration will then be added up for all the activities or subtasks, giving your level 4 task a total duration along with a total cost. The level 4s are then totaled to give a duration and cost for the third level deliverables. The same is then done for the other deliverables so that you have a total cost and duration for the project you are proposing to execute. The hope in doing all of this is so that you can have everything covered, but there are always unpredictable events that occur and risks that can affect the WBS. And that's why, if there are ever any uncertainties in an activity, it should be represented in the buffer time that you allow for in your scheduling. We hope that you found this learning valuable. For more learnings, go to our website and subscribe. Thank you.